Well, good morning, chat. Hopefully the week is treating you well. Better than it's treating our friends at CNN, who've had quite the adventure. Oh, it's been very difficult for them. Picking fights with people. Picking dates with some others. It's, uh... <laughs> I guess the double N in CNN stands for the double nigger network? Is that what we're going to call it? Because we're going to be talking about Fredo. I know, using that ethnic slur is very dangerous. If you weren't aware, Fredo is an ethnic slur against our Italian brothers. Happens to be one of those equivalent N-words, according to a CNN anchor. CNN, the first name in news. The people that brought us such hot bants and insight as, you're not allowed to legally read Wikipedia emails, because that's against the law. You need to wait for the, the man in the talking box to do it for you. Look at him. Look at our boy, Don Lemon. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say our boy. That might be construed as racist as well. I don't know what terminology I'm allowed to use when referring to people at CNN. It's very hard to figure it out. Can't say Fredo. Can't. I can't talk about my love of pasta around these people. Alfredo is going to get me that some kind of new ethnic slur as well, I suppose. Talk about any kind of pasta around these people, and you're going to get fired. You're going to the big, the big house. They've got room there now. Epstein's dead. He's been taken care of. Don't have to worry about uh, reserving a spot. There's one open for you. Lovely accommodations. No cameras. Guards sleep in all day long. <laughs> you have nothing to worry about. What a debacle. Now, we've got a lot of uh, updates on the Epstein situation, of course. Lots of hot new news came out about that. Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't this story become more ridiculous? Everything from Giuliani going on Fox News and speaking about the malfunctioning cameras and how incredulous he was about it. In fact, he even told the host uh, it's pretty much outright bullshit, at least from his perspective and his history of running prisons. He found that to be bullshit. We have the testimony of uh, insiders and those associated with the prison system, talking about the guards falsifying logs, the warden getting reassigned to a new position, and of course, if you've ever seen a suicide, should come as no surprise to you, lots of screaming, lots of screaming and shrieking, we all know that's, that's the sound suicidal people make, especially the people that hang themselves, you know, that noose gets tightened around your neck. If you don't kill yourself with a proper knot placage, you're going to suffocate through strangulation. And if you've ever been strangled, you know that you're very loud. When you close the throat off tightly, very loud. Can't stop screaming. Hear it blocks away when you tie a nice noose around somebody's neck. Oh, they sing like a canary. Got that coming up. Maybe even talk about Tim Wise a little bit. That man seems to be unhinged, I think would be a fair way of putting it. A little bit insane. A crazy individual. If red flag laws were in effect right now, Tim Wise would be getting a knock on his door. Talking about destroying people. I see that he takes the scarlet letter approach to justice. A very interesting approach to take. He's going for that Old Testament judgment. Let's wipe out the bloodline. Yes, we're going to, pu or we're going to uh, punish. We're going to punish for the, uh, the sins of the father. Well, in this case, it would be reversed. The uh, sins of the children would fall on the parents. But I think we should start off with CNN. How could we not? Chris Cuomo, uh, an anchor at CNN. For those of you unfamiliar, who is Chris Cuomo? Chris Cuomo would be the unsuccessful Cuomo brother. Not the governor. Not the rich, famous, popular person. It's the other one. As I like to call him, the Fredo of the family. The Chris, our boy Chris. Mr. Cuomo had a bit of a tiff, got into a little bit of uh, shenanigans just a few days ago, ran into somebody at an event, and apparently they accidentally called him Fredo to his face, and Chris didn't like that so much. It upset him a bit. Apparently, the, what you, could call, you can call Chris anything you want, but if you refer to him as a character from The Godfather, he's going to try to, he's, he's going to spaz out. He's just going to flip his shit. Oh, but he's a tough guy. Hey, I'm from the streets of New York over here, Chris Cuomo. Oh, I'm such a gabagoo. I'm such a tough guy. 
I'll put you in the trash truck. I'm Chris Cuomo. Ugh. So I suppose we can listen to him. Try his best Tony Soprano impression and fall flat on his fat fucking face. <laughs> Chris Cuomo trying to act tough is probably the most retarded thing I've ever seen. So how could we not watch that? So I think we'll start that off. We'll start off with that, I should say. Oh, I've got a diamond, but no message attached. Understandable. Understandable. Don't want Chris coming for you. Remember, CNN is a, a very spiteful news agency. If you make a gift they don't like, they're going to dox you into your family. You need to be taught a lesson. You need to sit down and shut up. CNN is talking now. The first name in news. The <laughs> Double Network. And I know you're saying, wait a minute, Jim, that's... Oh, that's awfully racist. How can you use the N-word with the hard R? Oh, you're a bigot, Jim. No. I'm just simply referring to it by what Chris Cuomo has come up with. The criteria that Chris Cuomo has come up with, that's how I'm referring it to. Because this isn't the first time that he's equated something to be equal to the N-word. Now, Fredo's one of them. We're going to see how that came about. But let's not forget the gem from the past. Chris is cutting deep insight that if you called a reporter fake news, that was like calling a reporter Nick. So, as far as I see it, calling Chris Cuomo fake news Fredo is basically calling him double nigger. He doesn't like it very much. So, let's uh, let's take a look at the video. Not very long. This was originally put up on YouTube. YouTube took it down, which is funny, because they talk about help me fight YouTube censorship right in the video title. Only reason the video was reinstated, Donald Trump Jr. tweeted out about it and shamed Google into reinstating it. It was pulled down initially for cyberbullying and harassment. Not sure how that works out, but we've seen over the past, I'd say, month, anytime that you put up information that's embarrassing to mainstream media or even alt-tech or tech in general, they'll pull it down. Uh, you saw that with the Veritas Project. And what, well, I can't even remember what the site was. It was a pin interest. Instagram, they, they all bleed together at a certain point. You start to lose interest in what differentiates each of them. But some some insight that they were rigging their search results and uh, biasing against Christian content. And when he put up his expose, and I'm talking about Veritas Project. Now, when they put up their expose, uh, that was censored on Twitter, that was censored on Facebook, and that was censored on YouTube. Everywhere, they took it down. So not surprising to me that this video that was put up about a CNN anchor was taken down as well. It's reached the point now where you can't even expose a journalist literally threatening to throw somebody down a flight of stairs without being labeled as bullying. You showing the world that a journalist threatened to throw you down the stairs is now considered bullying. Welcome to Clown World. Honk, honk. Honk, honk, chat. So let's see our tough guy, Mr. Gabagool's over here. Oh, forget about it. Let's see what he's got to say. Oh, Mr. Cuomo, you're so tough. Oh, my little, my little pussy's dripping wet, Mr. Cuomo. You're such a tough guy over here. Here we go. Uh, embrace yourself. You're going to love this. You're going to love Mr. Cuomo and his toughness. You're going to have a fucking problem. What? What are you going to do about it? I'll fucking ruin you your shit. I'll fucking something. throw you down these stairs like a fucking punk. I thought that's who you were. No, awesome. punk-ass bitches from the right call me Fredo. My name is Chris Cuomo. I'm an anchor on CNN. Oh. Fredo <laughs> is from the Godfather. He was that weak brother. I knew it was you, Fredo. Your and they brother, use though? it as an Italian aspersion. Any of you Italian? Are you Italian? I got, I got it's a fucking insult to your people. It's an insult to your fucking people. It's like the N-word for us. Is, wow. that, is that a cool f It's like the N-word for us. Oh, you can tell. Yeah, I, I, I want to come up with a new term, a new definition, a new phrase to explain what I'm watching here with Mr. Gabagools, our, our boy, Fake News Fredo. I want to call it, I, I don't know what I want to call it. It's uh, here's here. I'll, the, I'll explain to you what it is, and you come up with a clever term for it. It's what happens when a white guy, a white guy, particularly around really hardcore, politically correct liberals, desperately wants to be a victim, but has nothing that will allow him to be one. And so they search to latch on to something that will give them those victim points. That oh, it's so delicious. All those minorities, they've got those delicious victim points. Oh, look at the women. Oh, yeah. 
I want to be like the black guy. I want to get offended by the N-word. So Chris is going stir-crazy at CNN. He's going absolutely bonkers. Just <laughs> cuckoo. Desperate to get that victim point. And here it is. He's going to latch on to Fredo and say it's the same as the N-word. It's kind of stunning, really. If any other news anchor from Fox News... if Could you... Oh, God, could you imagine if Tucker Carlson tried this? How could you... Could you imagine if somebody said, Hey, Tucker, you're a waspy motherfucker. Yeah, that's why I'm... You're, you're a wasp. And he was like, How dare you say that about me? That's like calling me the N-word. Oh... Oh, liberals would be just enraged. How could you? How could you equate that insult to slavery? How could you equate that word to the N-word? You're disrespecting slavery in the struggle of the black man. And yet here's Chris Cuomo getting upset because somebody called him a godfather character and equating it to slavery because he's gone just a rat in this shithouse crazy. Desperate, desperate to emulate and to enjoy what he sees around him, but he can't because he's a white dude. And there's just nothing for him to latch on to. I don't know what the term would be. Come up with something. I'm sure there's something clever. You can think of something clever, but that is what we're watching. Chris is desperate to latch on to something for those victim points, but at the end of the day, he's just a goofy Italian fuck, and he gets really upset when you remind him his brother's more successful. Fucking thing. You're a much more reasonable guy in person than you seem to be on television. Yeah, but if you want to play, then we'll fucking play. If you've got I'm something not. you want to say about what I do on television, then say it. But don't be a fool to your Hey, man, insult. hey, listen. What? what? I don't want any problems. Bro. Yeah, you're going to have a big fucking problem. What's the problem? It's a little different on TV. Don't fucking insult me like What's that. I didn't insult you. Fuck, you call me Fredo. It's like. I also love how, like, there's almost stereotypical Italian music in the background, and they've got, like, vines and shit all over this tent. They film this in a fucking olive garden. Hey, it's Italian American Heritage Day. Let's go to the Olive Garden and have authentic food. I'm Chris Cuomo. Oh, I'll stick you in a garbage truck. Like I call you punk bitch. You like that? You want no, that to be I, your nickname? I didn't call you that. I, you I, called I, me Fredo. I you know my name's not fucking Fredo. I thought your name was. You did not think my name was fucking Fredo. Don't be a liar. I thought you want to be a man. Stand Let's up like a man. I'm standing up, man. You want to be a man out yeah, here? Then up. fucking own it. Then own what listen, you said. Man. Hey. Then own what you said. Listen, listen man. I don't have what? a problem with you, man. Yeah, you're going to have a fucking problem. What? What are you going to do about it? I'll fucking ruin your shit. I'll fucking throw you down these stairs like a fucking punk. Please do. Why? So you don't want to do Oh, see that? That right there? I think that's that toxic masculinity. Hasn't CNN done at least three or four hundred specials on that? And on angry white men? In fact, I'm pretty certain if you were to go on CNN's Twitter feed or their website and look up the term angry white man, you're probably going to find at least over double digits, almost triple digits, articles and coverage covering that topic. And it, here's one of their own, an angry white man threatening to throw somebody down a flight of stairs because they called him Fredo. Because they called him Fredo. <laughs> He's trying so hard. So hard to be tough. And it's just... It's not really working. The guy talking to him hasn't really run away. His voice isn't quivering. I mean, you have to remember Chris Cuomo. This is shot at a weird angle. Chris Cuomo, I believe, is four foot eight. If you put Chris Cuomo and Ben Shapiro side by side, you'd think they're twins. I'm saying he's a manlet. He's an itty bitty guy. Itty bitty Guido. <laughs> it's, it, they used to call him the Wonder Wop because you wonder where he is. I can smell him, but I can't see him. Oh, look down. There's Chris Cuomo. Hey, Fredo. How you doing? You don't so you can fucking sue? Well, why don't you do it? Go take a swing. You want to call me Fredo? Take a fucking swing. Take a fucking swing. Watch your fucking hands. Take a swing. Watch your fucking hands. Take a swing. No, no, come on, boy. Come on, boy. So you want to call me shit? Call me shit. Hey, listen, man. I'm not doing anything. I'll fucking wreck your shit. I'll fucking wreck your shit. Stop. You didn't ask me. You didn't know what you were doing. I thought it was your name. I thought it was your name. You didn't know, right? Did you hear how angry he... I want to back it up, because that's the funniest part. <laughs> Look at the... He's got those crazy eyes going. You see how tough I am over here behind these three guys? Oh, if my friends weren't here, I'd be hurting you. Oh, you're lucky there. Hold me back. I'm Chris Cuomo. Oh, international street fighter. You got the ghouls. 
<laughs> he's, got, <laughs> he's got the craziest look in his eyes. But you can hear, he gets really, there's a visceral anger. There's a visceral anger as he's being held back by 18 people. Uh, let's see if we capture it again. Stop. You didn't, you you didn't, you didn't know what you were doing when I you thought it was Fredo. your name. Man. I, you know now. I thought it was You know now. And he almost sounds like, you know who he sounds like? Oh, oh, okay. What was he? There was a television show from the 80s or 90s where there's a Tony. It was a Tony. It was an Italian guy who's like a, a maid. It was a male maid. Alyssa Milano played his daughter. The way he screams there sounds like that character Tony. Angela! <laughs> Just compare it. Somebody could clip that and compare it to Tony going, Angela! What you were doing with I thought it was Fredo? your name. Man. I, I thought it was You know now! Angela! Where's Alyssa? What was your name? You didn't Break know, up. right? Break Break you didn't know what you were saying, right? I thought it was his You're name. Your name. I'm breaking it up. I'm breaking it up. Right. Here's a little entry. I want it to be like Wonder Woman, and I'm going to wear a shirt that says it. <laughs> Chris, oh, oh, by the way, God bless whoever edited this video. That was the perfect ending to it. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> bet you wanted to be like Wonder Woman. Chris, I bet that's what you wanted to be like. Oh, what a guy. Oh, hey, I'm angry over Chris Cuomo. So this video comes out of Chris just acting just fucking ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Chris Cuomo, oh, he's so tough. Oh, I'm a tough guy. Fredo is the N-word. The vice president, the vice president of CNN actually defends him. Do you, can you believe that? The fucking VP... I want to make sure I get the guy's name right. Hopefully he didn't take the fucking thing down. Matt Dornick. Matt Dornick, if you're unaware, is the vice president at CNN. Responded to Donald Trump Jr. making fun of Chris Cuomo and said, Chris Cuomo defended himself when he was verbally attacked. Verbally attacked. With the use of an ethnic slur and an orchestrated setup. We completely support him. An ethnic slur. VP of fucking CNN saying calling somebody fucking Fredo is an ethnic slur. I've known a lot of Italians. I don't th I don't th I don't think any of them have ever gotten upset with somebody using the, the name Fredo. In fact, I think a few of them might have been named Fredo. Has anybody told the Italians that the, what they're naming their children is an ethnic slur? I'm pretty sure I've never met a black dude named Nick, but I've met some Italians named Fredo. I don't know how CNN's going to exactly explain that one away. <laughs> Maybe they've got better insight into this than I do. An ethnic slur. VP of CNN. Oh, Twitter had fun with this. Social media in general did. Because it's stupid. It's just ridiculous. Chris Cuomo is a moron. An ethnic slur. Right out. He pulled that right out of his ass. Now, people did some digging. Again, because remember, this is an ethnic slur, and CNN, the vice president, has made a statement. We won't tolerate that. Not here at glorious CNN. We have standards. We're not going to let your racism on our airwaves. We don't tolerate that around here. Y'all need to get, you need to get going, bigots. Except for the fact that, apparently, Fredo has been used on CNN repeatedly it's been used on his fucking channel. Chris Cuomo doing shows. People have used Fredo as an insult. And he sat there smiling. I'm confused. The vice president's telling me it's an ethnic slur. And they're airing it on the fucking airwaves. So people put together a little compilation of all the times Fredo's come up. Uh, one of them, I'm sure you remember uh, our boy, uh, Rick Wilson. Uh, if you don't. He's the guy that likes to dress up like a Jedi. <laughs> you can see Anderson Cooper uh, taking a moment in between sucking dicks. Uh, we'll get to sucking dicks, by the way. This image, it's a twofer. I like to call it a twofer when it comes to CNN because we're going from the Fredo story into something else and it involves Don Lemon. We'll get to that in a moment. 
No, we're talking about uh, Anderson. Anderson has Rick Wilson on, and Rick has taken a break from his uh, live-action role-playing as uh, Obi-Wan Nobody Gives a Shit, <laughs> who still watches Star Wars, except for fucking Rick Wilson. The only reason he's into Star Wars is his wife is so goddamn fat she can cosplay as Jabba. He's got an excuse. She's just dedicated to the role. It's method acting. Don't tell me my wife is fat. She just really loves those fucking movies. So let's listen to, to Rick here explain it. It's it's absolutely part of this um, this you know oh the, all the forces of society are arrayed against us. It's just us and Donald Trump against the world. And uh, look, Devin Nunes is proving himself again and again to be the Fredo of the Republican Party. This guy has made a huge mistake doing this, and uh, and the fact is. Not sure exactly what's going on. Anderson's got a little bit of an uncomfortable look on his face. I don't think that's because of the ethnic slur. I think he's merely just readjusting his anal beads. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar, Anderson Cooper's gay. Spoiler alerts. A lot of gay men at CNN. I wonder, I wonder if Don Lemon ever tried to pressure Anderson Cooper into gay sex. Hopefully that comes out in the civil suit. I don't want to... I'm getting too ahead of myself right now. So... The, the Fredo of the Republican Party. Okay, well, that's just that's just one guy. All right, that's not that's not necessarily. Hey, it's not necessarily damaging. Ugh. Uh, I, b- I believe somebody. Okay, is this the one where the guy put together somebody put together a compilation clip of the clip of him getting angry about Fredo and then people saying Fredo around him? I believe this is the one. There's lots of stuff out there. <laughs> I believe this is the one. So uh, let's take a look at this. Again, remember, ethnic slur, CNN, the vice president, everybody's very upset about it. Very triggering. Very upsetting. Punk-ass bitches from the right call me Fredo. It's like the N-word for us. Is that that a cool fucking thing? Uh, Daddy kept Fredo back home. So who cares what Donald Trump Jr. says? Look, Devin Nunes is proving himself again and again to be the Fredo of the Republican Party. It's like the N-word for us. It's like, look at his face. Oh, this guy has a complex. I'm just going to put this out here. He's not upset because Fredo's the N-word for Italians. It's not. That's retarded. He's upset because he doesn't want to be reminded that he is the less successful brother. Because that's what he is. That's what made him angry. That's why it gets under his skin. And the amount of replies to this motherfucker, nonstop. People calling him Fredo, nonstop. You know it eventually there's going to be a point where he's going to go on a spree killing. <laughs> if you keep calling him Fredo, he's eventually going to go out there and just start murdering people. Not going to be able to handle it. Now, strangely, uh, people in the mainstream media stick up for their own. I don't think anybody's really surprised about that. Sean Hannity giving his hot take on it. I say good for Chris Cuomo. He's out with his nine-year-old daughter, his wife, and this guy's being a jackass in front of his family. In my honest opinion... Cuomo has zero to apologize for. He deserves the apology. Can we get get some thoughts and prayers in chat? Can I get a T and P in chat, please, for Sean Hannity? He's obviously suffered brain damage. Must have been tragic. Maybe he drowned himself in his own swimming pool at his mansion. I'm not sure. But I can only explain such a hot take with some kind of uh, blunt force trauma to the head. He's out with his nine-year-old daughter and wife. He deserves the apology. So this teachable moment brought to us by Chris Cuomo, when somebody misidentifies you and uses the wrong name, calls you a character from a movie, threaten to ruin them, and throw them down a flight of stairs. Honey, this is how adults interact. Watch your daddy. As he, uh, as he goes Tony Soprano on some random guy and threatens to kick his ass. Because he called him Fredo. Ridiculous. Sean. Ridiculous. The news media. It's it's full of handicapped people. I, I can't think of any other way to explain it. Now, as if it wasn't bad enough. As if it wasn't bad enough. For our little boy, Chris. Of course. Give it about... I'd say four or five hours. This was trending for goddamn near an entire day. People were calling him Fredo so much in his fucking replies. It trended number one in the U.S. and worldwide for damn near a day. 
but give it till the morning. And of course, here comes Trump. <laughs> you got Trump was super understanding. Felt very bad for our boy Fredo. <laughs> I thought Chris was Fredo also. The truth hurts. Totally lost it. <laughs> Low ratings at CNN. Just, just twist that knife in. Oh, he hates CNN. I don't blame him. Uh, this I can agree with Trump. CNN is shit. And you just know that pissed fucking Fredo off. Like nothing. Oh, <laughs> just getting shit on by the president of the United States. President of the United States takes time out of his morning to call you the, the loser brother from the Godfather. <laughs> and then he shits on your ratings. After everybody else spent the entire evening. Spent the entire evening shitting on you for being a fucking moron. And yet all your all your boys in the news media coming out to defend you. Now, if I I want to make sure I remember this. I want us to take a little journey and take a look at uh, Chris Cuomo. I, I I'm certain there should still be articles up about this. Oh, Chris. Oh yeah, from Business Insider. Okay, here we go. Oh, no thanks. Oh, God. Business Insider, you're killing me here. Why are you being so... Why are you being so terrible to me, Business Insider? One moment, chat. I'm going to have to go for an archived version, of course. Can't read any... Is anybody else annoyed by that? I mean, I can't be the only one. I can't imagine that I would be the only one. That gets annoyed by the fact that anytime... You see a, a, a news site nowadays write about something. You go, you're thinking, okay, you know, I want to look up a news topic. I'm going to go to the site. Now, sure, you're used to dealing with advertisements. Advertisements are annoying. But now when you go to these fucking news sites, a CNBC, a Business Insider, a Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, it doesn't really matter what it is. You're immediately locked out. They're either demanding that you pay them money immediately to read the article. Well, first off, I look at news like I look at a grocery store. If I can't see the produce in front of me, I can't put my fucking hands on it, can't give those tomatoes a squeeze? Make sure they're not vile and decrepit? Saturated with pesticides? I'm not going to pay you money for that. I don't even know what you wrote. you got to let me read some shit first if you want me to pay you money. How do I know you're any good at what you're doing? <laughs> for all I know, you could be the worst fucking news site on earth, but I'm never going to know now. Because I'm not going to go to your fucking website and get strong-armed because I need to look up an article about, I don't know, fish exploding in San Francisco and you're the one of only three assholes that wrote about it fuck you but it seems to be pretty common luckily archive.is or any of the other iterations just cuts to the bullshit fuck these guys just go to archive can't do shit about that can you oh it makes you mad doesn't it news that you can't do anything about it but nonetheless this comes from business insider Chris this isn't the first time that he's done this Complained about something being the equivalent of the N-word, again, in his quest to be offended. To be treated like a protected minority, Chris is always seeking something to justify his uh, liberal angst. Today was the, well, I'm sure, well, not today, but a few days ago, it was people calling him Fredo. Before that, it was fake news. Very upset about fake news. Again, this is from Business Insider from 2017. CNN host Chris Cuomo says fake news insult is the equivalent of of the N-word for journalists. Sound familiar to you? CNN host Chris Cuomo said on Thursday that he believes hurling the fake news insult at journalists is similar to when people use racial slurs against minorities. Chris with the hottest of hot takes, really. I see being called fake news at the equivalent of the N-word for journalists, Cuomo said. The equivalent of calling... E Oh, here we go. The equivalent of calling an Italian any of the ugly words that people have for that ethnicity. See how he ties it back in? Oh, he wants to be a victim so bad. He wants to be a victim so bad. He wants, to, he wants Italians to be oppressed. <laughs> no, nobody oppresses Italians, Chris. We love spaghetti. We fucking love spaghetti. The Sopranos is an excellent show. I don't, I, I'm not used to Italian hate. I don't, I don't think I've ever really seen it. <laughs> You're not oppressed, brother. I'm sorry, it's just not happening. You're barking up the wrong tree, Chris. Your pasta's delicious. 
We can't hate you for that. That's what fake news is to a journalist, the CNN host continued. It's an ugly insult, and you'd better be right if you're going to charge a journalist with lying on purpose. Earlier in the day, Cuomo said being called fake news was like an ethnic disparagement. But he didn't at the time compare it to the N-word. No, he waited till later on to do that. And then within hours, of course, I'm sure somebody at CNN, probably Don Lemon and Anderson Cooper, took a break from their popper-induced gay gangbang to say, wait a minute, you can't say that, Chris. Because an update just a few hours later apologized on Twitter. I was wrong calling a journalist fake nothing compared to the pain of a racial slur. I should not have said it. I apologize. So he's prepared. If you think for a moment that Chris Cuomo wasn't looking for an end, he was. He waited two fucking years for somebody, just somebody, to take a swing at him. And he latched on to Fredo. That was going to be his thing. So that's why when I said earlier that if you call him fake news Fredo, what you're really calling him is a double nigger. Not my words. Those are Chris Cuomo's words. Kind of. <laughs> sort of. Extrapolated upon it. All right, I've, I've developed this theorem using uh, my uh, Cuomag, how would I say it? My Cuomo, my, my Cuomo mathematics. There we go. I call it the double nigger theorem using Cuomo mathematics by our, our brilliant and esteemed colleague Chris Cuomo explaining to us that fake news Fredo, it's basically like owning slaves. If you call him fake news Fredo, might as well grab a whip. Start telling them to pick cotton. That poor Italian oppressed minority. But CNN, of course, not content with having uh, one of their journalists just merely threaten to beat a man, decides, let's double down. Let's have one of our journalists threaten to beat a man. Let's have another journalist threaten to fuck a man. <laughs> Enter Don Lemon. I love it. It's just not their week, really. Uh, let's we'll, we'll go with uh, Fox. They've got Fox News has got the unbiased hot take. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they're loving it. CNN's Don Lemon accused of assault uh, in sexually charged encounter at New York bar. Uh oh, what did our boy Don Lemon do? CNN primetime host Don Lemon, who was accused of a bizarre, sexually charged assault of a bartender in New York's Tony Hamptons last year in a, su or a civil suit filed earlier this week. Dustin Heiss of Florida stated in the lawsuit that he was living in the Hamptons and working at the Old Stove Pub in Sagapanak. I, these New York names, I just can't do it. During the summer of 2018, on July 15th, after closing, Heist claimed he left with the owner and co-workers to a party at another bar, Murph's Backstreet Tavern in Sag Harbor, where they saw a lemon. Recognizing the newsman, Heist offered to buy him a vodka drink called the Lemon Drop. According to the suit, Lemon declined the offer, Heist said, but later approached him inside the establishment. I love this. I, I don't care if you're gay or straight. Um, this may be the most disgusting fucking thing I've ever heard. If this is your pickup technique, you deserve to get hit. This is filthy. This is filthy for anyone to do. So please, if you have a little notebook on how to pick up people, if, you, if you're going the pickup artist route, write this down in the do not section. Lemon put his hand down the front of his own shorts and vigorously rubbed his genitalia. He removed his hand and shoved his index finger and middle finger into the plaintiff's mustache and under the plaintiff's nose. <laughs> oh, fucking what? You're an animal. What? Who the fuck does that? Who does that? You rubbed your own balls and shoved your fucking fingers and hands. And savor the flavor. Come, sm What does this smell like? Smell this. Does that get you horny? I don't wash myself. Does that get you aroused? I'm Don Lemon. Smell my fingers. What a degenerate fuck. It's just horrific. Why would you do it? Put his hand down his own shorts, rubbed his balls, and then stuck them in his mustache. He wants to get that scent stuck in there. You ever see somebody with a mustache eat something and never goes away? 
wants to make sure that scent is sealed in. But then he follows it up. <laughs> Please tell me I have the quote here. Uh, he categorically denies it. Cameras were turned off. I can't believe they don't actually have the quote. Fox, what are you doing? How could you not have the quote? After shoving his uh, ball-smelling fingers under this man's face, he asked him, Do you like pussy or dick? Ugh. What the hell? CNN, your trusted name in news. CNN, your trusted source in physical violence and sexual assault, more like it. Can't keep these guys under control. Now, you'd think, you would think, that's got it. Uh, how can we be sure that's true? How can we be sure Don Lemon would do something like that? I want you to take some time today, if you get a moment, and go look up Don Lemon New Year's Eve coverage, where you'll see him shit-faced drunk, rip-roaring drunk, in bars, acting inappropriately. He's done it on air, while not shoving his ball-smelling fingers in somebody's face, but getting very drunk and acting inappropriately, it's not unheard of. He's done this publicly on television. So, you know, reading the story and then knowing a bit about Don and his behavior at a bar, I could see him doing it. Now, I'm not saying that he did do it. We'll find out with the civil suit, obviously. CNN's already trying to claim that the person that brought the civil suit has an agenda, that the person that uh, brought this claim forward hates CNN. <laughs> I don't know if you'd call hating CNN an agenda. I call it just a basic opinion of a majority of people at this point that's based on their ratings. But they're, they're trying to go with that, saying that, oh, well, his Instagram, his Twitter account, his YouTube, he all, he, all this CNN hate, uh, to which the lawyers or the person that brought the suit said, we don't know what the fuck you're talking about. We don't, these accounts aren't ours. Uh, you're obviously confused. So we'll find out how that turns out. But a, a stellar week for CNN. One guy getting upset and threatening to throw people down the stairs, and another guy wanting men to smell his fingers so he can fuck them in their ass. What is going on? Who's running this news organization? How are these people, how do they still have jobs behaving like this in public? Just disgraceful, really. You know, a lot of, a lot of news organizations get a lot of shit for how the reporters behave. Uh, rightfully so, really. Uh, but they seem to be quicker on the draw to take care of those issues. Uh, I mean, I would say at this point, Fox News and MSNBC probably chastise their reporters more thoroughly than CNN does. I mean, the very fact that the vice president would go out and publicly say that they defend how Chris Cuomo is behaving is astonishing to me. And the very fact that Don Lemon <laughs> is making people smell his balls... Without getting any kind of pushback, they're defending this, too. What is going on at this fucking network? Who is who is running the show here? You know, now that I brought it up, why don't we just, why don't we journey and see if, I'm going to see if I can find the footage. I'm just going to give it old, uh, 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 the old look on YouTube. And see if we can find Don Lemon drunk. Uh, yep, here we go. Don Brooke. First, first result. Let's uh, let's take a look. Let's watch a little footage of Don getting loosened up. Let's imagine how many men at the bar Don is Don Brooke. A hit knot as he's completely shit faced. How long ago was this? I believe it was two years ago, three years maybe. Let me find out if I got a date on this. 2016. Don Lemon from 2016. Let's uh, just take a look. See how he acts in the bar. I don't know. Chat. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating this. Maybe he acts like a little angel. Oh, my sweet little baby boy. Would never make you smell his balls. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, Don? First, let me read some of these lemon chats. Uh, praise be to the lemon emperor as we read these lemon chats. Tara Jester. Chris Cuomo is the weak brother, hence the, re uh, the reaction. Absolutely agree. Hawkeye 81. Stack Shuffler from Hollow Gemini. Mr. Gabagoo, Mr. Gibba Gabagoo is victim claiming from Mongrel. Fredo, the oppression envy. Uh, that's actually, yeah, you know what? That That's what I'd call it, oppression envy. He's upset that he can't get in on it. From Lupum, he was an itty-bitty wop Fredo, Chini. Sad. From Lupum again. Oh, God, CNN American. 
Don Lemon Black, what? No. And finally, Psycho Dad. Funny how there's never a camera around these days. You know, it's amazing, isn't it? Whether you're a billionaire pedophile on charges of uh, massive international conspiracy, committing suicide in your cell, or Don Lemon trying to make people smell your genitals, never seems to be a fucking camera when you need one, does there? Got a few stream labs here. I'll read those two real quick. Then we'll see how Don acts when he's drunk on New Year's. From Jeb Bush. Oh my God, Jeb's here. Jeb, I love you. I hope you run again. But from Jeb Bush. Someone needs to call Walmart and let them know a notorious pedophile named Matt Jarbo is walking around with a camera looking up little girls' skirts in the DVD section. Oh, somebody's got to stop him. From Jeffrey Epstein. Oh my God, he's still alive. What, you, Mr. Epstein, thank you for the money. From Jeffrey Epstein. Man, there's some thick toddlers down here in hell. <laughs> is there? You checking out the unbaptized baby section of hell, are you, Mr. Epstein? I didn't know they had PayPal down there, but now that I think about it, it actually makes perfect sense. From Malone Dick 117 you're not an anti-bully, you are the bully. HTRTU. Gotta make sure to call DSP Fredo. From Joshua Moon. Add display none important and inspect element to remove all the, turn off the pesky ad block shit. Also try to learn some of the basics of CSS. Then you can make your own custom user cells that do that. And finally from Jigaboo Jones, press F in chat to call Chris Cuermo Fredo. Well, I'd agree with you there. I, you know, I, I feel this is ridiculous having to explain this to anybody, and I doubt anybody in this particular audience watching this needs this explained. But on the off chance that one day somebody watches an archived version of the stream, let me just put out some very basic pointers. If something bothers you, don't ever publicly admit to it. The fact that Chris Cuomo had a shit fit over this, the fact that he threatened to throw a man down a flight of stairs after being called Fredo, has assured that for the rest of his life, people will always call him Fredo. Now they know what pisses him off. That was the worst thing to do, Chris. You've, you've exposed yourself. Now everybody knows how to fuck with you. You should have just rolled with it. Or if you're really angry, you should have just hit him. But you had to be a little, a little bitch. Act tough, but not do anything. Uh, but, okay. That's, that's your, that's your uh, little PSA for the day. That, that, in fact, that's my new, it's a PSA for the day. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> Just never, never admit to nothing, kids. Deny, deny, deny. All right, let's watch a little bit of Don Lemon getting shit-faced on New Year's. Hopefully this is a, a good cross-section of that stream. If I remember right, he was acting like a drunken buffoon at a bar. Obviously not hitting on any women, unless this woman has a penis, in which case then he probably was hitting on them. Maybe he got drunk because he was upset that Anderson was with uh, whatever this is. So, you know, they're separated. Can't let the gay guys report together. It'll just turn into kinky sex. We've got, we got to keep these two away from each other. You remember what happened in 2015, don't you? Nearly got taken off the air from all the gay sex that took place. Hi, guys. Hola. Happy almost New Year. Hi. Oh, boy. We're at the Spotted Cat. The time, the time has almost arrived. Okay, tell them what's going to happen. I'm going to get something. So we've invited our new friend Chris over. And <laughs> now, if you're wondering why is that man dressed like that, well, he's just taking precautions. See, he heard CNN wanted to interview him, and he thought, oh, wait a minute. That's that network with all the gay guys. I don't want to get AIDS. Better put on some surgical gloves and an operating mask. I kid. I kid. No, they came to get, uh, I guess, in. Don's imagination. He thought this was going to be a good segment to do drunk on New Year's. And Chris clearly has many, much, much ink. And the decision all night has been, should it be a tattoo or, or a, piercing? a piercing? I mean, what are you thinking? I know, the people I know. want to know what crazy, let me, silly... Let, let me ask. Let me ask. Kathy, uh, I think Kathy. Anderson might ask Kathy, hear me Kathy wrong. Griffin, Kathy, what should in. I do? Nipple, 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 nipple. Is that, is that that crazy bitch from Twitter that keeps making really shitty avant-garde art? Like the new wave hippie shit where it's like Trump getting his head ripped off? Kathy, that's the one, right? 
She looks like she's going through uh, 18 treatments of chemo at the moment. Am I thinking of the right one? It's hard to keep track of all the crazy liberals at this point. I don't know how much makeup they had to put on her, and I'm pretty certain that's a wig. Because that's not the Kathy Gifford I'm remembering. Chad, am I thinking of the right one or no? That is? That is the Kathy Gifford I'm thinking of? I don't know what the fuck is going on right now. <laughs> Does CNN have vampires working for them? Maybe that explains it. Kathy Gifford was a normal person until... May oh, Anderson Cooper needed fresh blood. He needed a blood transfusion, healthy blood. We got to keep him on the air. Kathy, come here. I'm going to <laughs> turn you into a crazy person. I'm going to drain you of your blood. No, Don. I love you, Kathy. No, I love you. You don't, um, don't want to hear I mean, my love for you, too, is... but we really don't need to see what's no, about to no, happen here. No, no, Don. I love you, Don. No, right, no, right, right, no. Right. keep it close. All right, all right. Keep it close. All right. I love all you right. more, Don. Look at him. He's just, I'm going to get naked on television. I'm Don Lemon. I'm super. Look at Anderson Cooper. He's fucking disgusted. I bet you Anderson Cooper hates him. <laughs> you think that's what's going on? You think Anderson Cooper hates Don Lemon? You think he's like, man, Don Lemon makes gay guys look bad. I fucking hate him. Look at me. I'm wearing a fancy suit. I got my tie on. I don't ever do this dumb drunk shit in public. There aren't any news stories of me making people smell my balls. I'm just a respectable gay dude. And here's Don Lemon on the right-hand side, sloppy drunk, taking his clothes off. Like a fucking frat boy on national television. So listen, since I promised, since I promised, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Anderson. That was good. The decision you know, is good. Uh, I'm thinking ear or something more fun, but ear's cool. Okay. Ear's cool. Let's do it. Hang on. Hang on. Tell him what we had to do first. We had to be in a sterile place. Can we, can sterile we please, please not uh, give him shots, by the way? And then uh, everything. I, I thought, isn't it illegal? <laughs> the FCC, don't they have regulations about alcohol and cigarettes on television? Because <laughs> Don Lemon's just getting shit-faced. I want this strange white man in the surgical mask and gloves to start poking me, but I better get real drunk first. It's going to hurt. <laughs> it's going to pause me. Don Lemon's about to get paused in real life. Everything's pre-sterilized, ready to go. So we're good. Okay, okay, I'm cutting you off after this one. Should I cut him off? Is this going to hurt? It's not going to hurt me. You'll be fine. If you if you go to a tattoo, if you go to a tattoo shop or a, like a, a guy that does piercings and you say, is it going to hurt? And he's like, it ain't going to hurt me. <laughs> you picked a real winner. I like that. That's that's some nice blunt. Eye. Hey, I'm fine over here. I got the surgical gloves on. I'm not the guy with AIDS. <laughs> I'm going to stick this needle into you, though. We're going to see what happens. Come here, human pincushion. This All right, is let's seriously go. about to happen. Don't, don't uh, get blood do on my jacket. Do you need to hold my hands? Yeah. Oh, this hurts, I'm gonna Lord. Be so mad. Is your mother watching? Yeah. I bet your mom is. Oh, Mama boy. Lemon. I don't know what he's thinking. All right, all right, hold on. At Here least it's just his ear. You know what I'm saying? Here we go, bro. Here we go. Oh, God. Ah! Uh. Oh, Don't get oh. blood in the jacket. It has to go back. To, it goes back to Brooks Brothers. Here we go. Here's the needle. Oh. Here's the needle. Oh. 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 Yeah, that's right. You take it. Oh, you like that big, thick needle, Don? Oh, you, t you tiny little earlobe, Don. Oh, let's. Oh, you just got. <laughs> you just got pissed. Oh, yeah. You like that big needle. Anderson, is this getting you horny? You like oh, Don getting pierced? Oh, the whole Mother. crowd. Oh. Yeah. The whole crowd's like, what is going uh, on? Oh, I'm in pain. Wow. I'm in pain. Uh, Why so are you doing this, my friend? You know, I'm pretty sure I, 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 yeah, I can tell you exactly. I'm not even psychic, but I can tell you what's going through Anderson's head right now. He's like, I left the CIA for this. I was a I was in the Intel community and I left it for this this circus sideshow shit. I gotta watch this drunk idiot get pierced on television. Clap. It's Kathy the end of Rudy. Anderson. Slow clap. Oh. <laughs> it's the end of Rudy. Oh. Somebody, somewhere Gene happens. Oh, it's a Florida wow. Lee. 
Oh, oh my no, gosh. No, I cannot no. believe I'm doing this. Wow. Is he hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold no, on. No, no, oh, no, no. Ow, 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 ow. Oh. Oh. Ow. Oh, All right. Ken, Ken tell us close up on the floor to leave because we're in New Orleans. Wow, congrats. Looks great, bro. Looks like you have pimples on your earlobe. Nothing says sexy like infected acne on your fucking face. Nice look. I'm sure the gay guys are lining up for that. <laughs> That's terrible. Not only is he not only is he obnoxious, but he's got bad fashion sense. How did he become gay? How did that happen? That's uh, Don Lemon getting shit-faced on CNN on New Year's. But as you can see, he does stupid things when he's drunk. I'm sure he got yelled at by the executives. People were probably screaming in his ear. So it's not hard for me to imagine that Don Lemon would act inappropriately at a bar after he had a few shots and do something stupid, like getting his ear pierced on national television or rubbing his genitalia and then asking people to smell his fingers like it's some kind of caveman mating ritual. <laughs> what is this Stone Age shit? You think he, like, is there a pickup artist version of uh, for gay men? Does that exist? Because I can't... I, I Who would tell somebody that? Who would say, hey, if you want to get a really sexy guy home with you, make him smell your balls. Just rub your hand all over your junk. Yeah, you want to walk around all day, so you got a real rank stank going on. Then just make him savor that flavor. Oh, they love it. That's how you should greet other gay men. <laughs> Give them a stink finger. They love it. Oh, it's going to get them, uh, they're going to get all wet. Whatever the equivalent is for a gay dude. <laughs> Who told him this? Oh, I bet there's some Me Too stories about this dude. I bet there's some, if that pickup shit is true, there are some Me Too stories about this guy. I would hate to work at CNN with Don Lemon. I'd hate to be the motherfucker in the wardrobe, or wardrobe section doing the makeup. I'd hate to be the guy getting the coffee. You gotta walk around with a chastity belt on. Protect yourself. Wear a fucking Bane mask so you're not smelling musk all day from this man's taint. Disgusting. Now we'll get to the Epstein stuff, but I'm rather enjoying laughing at CNN being a shitty, uh, disreputable news station. I mean, it's not really breaking news, I would imagine. I'm pretty sure everybody's well aware that CNN is dog shit. I wonder if there are any supercuts of Chris Cuomo being a fucking moron. I know there are of Don Lemon. Well, let's just see what happens. The best of Chris Cuomo? Well, no, that's from Fox. Oh, you know, I, I think this is Tucker Carlson shitting on him a year ago. Why, why don't we hear Tucker's hot take on him? Poor Tucker came out and said some things that got people upset. Of course, uh, this was recently when he called white nationalism a hoax. Uh, when he said the idea that white nationalists were some large terror cell in the United States, he called that ridiculous. He talked about crime statistics and gun violence. Uh, kind of essentially almost did what um, astrophysics black guy did uh, by telling people shit and making them very angry. Went on a bit of a sabbatical after that because he got yelled at, of course. Tucker must be thrilled. He was getting a lot of shit for his statements uh, after the El Paso shootings and uh, the Dayton, Ohio shootings. And then here comes CNN with violence and sexual assault to take the heat off him. So I guess to celebrate, let's watch Tucker laughing at Chris Cuomo. We want to dig a little deeper tonight into our vast Chris Cuomo archive to bring you tape from this summer when for a brief moment, CNN's poet laureate and morning show host tried his hand at movie criticism. Watch this. Wonder Woman, amazing. You finally had a female director break the $100 million mark. The film means more than just its box score. What does it mean to you? Here's a little entry. I want it to be like Wonder Woman, and I'm going to wear a shirt that says it. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Who says that? I wanted to be... What's the hand thing? Is <laughs> I love it. You know, he's like a walking Italian stereotype with the, just the gabagool hands. <laughs> it's just, you don't see. You know, I'll, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I mean, these these stereotypes exist everywhere for every different every different group. But Chris, Chris has it nailed to a fucking art form. 
Let's watch this again. Wonder Woman, and I'm going to wear a shirt that says it. Now, to the conventional Western mind trained in the Aristotelian tradition of rigorous textual analysis, a number of questions arise from what you just saw. What does it qualify as intrigue that Chris Cuomo once wanted to be Wonder Woman? Did he ever wear that shirt? What's with the air kisses? So many more questions. And yet it would be a mistake to approach a Chris Cuomo video in this way, bound by the fetters of logic and English grammar. Better to understand Chris Cuomo for who he is, an artist, a poet, a seeker, a shaman. The question is not, what the hell is Chris Cuomo talking about? The question is, what is Chris Cuomo trying to teach us, all of us, humanity itself? We can't answer that question. We're not Chris Cuomo. And so in the coming days, we'll bring you more of Chris Cuomo, much more, until we reach enlightenment or run out of videos, whichever comes first. Oh, you're never going to run out of videos. <laughs> not with Chris Cuomo. Uh, in fact, I believe, I believe he was the email guy, too. Let me see if I can find this. Uh... Oh, was it Chris Cuomo that said this? Yes, I believe it was. Oh, if I could just find the clip, would be great. Uh, one second, Chad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm almost 100% certain he was the one that said it. That Chris Cuomo was the one that went on and said that only journalists were allowed to, to read uh, the WikiLeaks. Oh, you know what? Actually, that's probably the better search term. How is there not just a dedicated clip to this? Okay, maybe it's from the Jimmy Dore So I don't show, know if you've been following the WikiLeaks. Let's see if he's just got the clip itself. We'll find out here. Leaks. Uh... You're probably not because uh, the mainstream news media isn't. And when they do, they cover it incorrectly. Here's Chris Cuomo. Uh, he's going to tell us what you need to know about the WikiLeaks. This is very, very important. Also interesting is remember, it's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. The absolute balls on this motherfucker. It's illegal for you to read... WikiLeaks. You, you can't read the Clinton emails. You need to learn about it from us. Chris Cuomo is a fucking moron. God, he's got some dumb fucking takes, doesn't he? Can't read. Can't read those WikiLeaks emails. I want to be Wonder Woman. Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> what was that fucking hand thing? G -g 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 -ghouls. Chris Cuomo. The fuck happened to you? You are the Fredo of your family. I bet your brother's just fucking mortified that you're on television every day. I bet you he tells people no relation. When they're like, hey, are you related to that, that Cuomo guy on CNN? He's like, nah. Same last name, but I've never seen him before. I don't know who the fuck that guy is. <laughs> you're the embarrassment of the family. You're the one that nobody brings up at dinner time on Thanksgiving or Christmas. <laughs> you're, they always point to the more successful son. Oh, yeah, the governor. Oh, he's really... Yeah, uh, we're, we're very proud of our boy. Chris? Never heard of him. Who's Chris? Chris Cuomo on CNN. No, I guess same last name, but I'm not, it's not us. <laughs> it's, he's not allowed here for family gatherings. We don't let him over here. Quick, honey, tell the neighbors he died. Our son, Chris, the one you think is the Chris from CNN? No, our son, Chris, died tragically at the age of 10 in a canoeing accident. Very tragic uh, Boy Scout accident that happened. <laughs> oh, Chris. Chris, Chris, Chris. All right. Uh, I got a few more lemon chats here. <clears throat> Sorry. A little bit of coughing a little bit. Coughing a little bit over here. Okay. <laughs> he just makes me want to do really shitty Italian impressions now. From Gout Infested Retard. Look up video of Special Forces trolling CNN, please. Oh, we can pull that up, sure. From the Big Sniff. Cheers for these bedtime stories, Papa Jim. From Gout Infested Retard again. Drunk on the job on New Year's. Good job, Lemon. From Sardi. Jess Yaniv. Doxed Blair. Tranny on Tranny Violence. From Bimbo Dickens. DonLemonParty.org. And finally, from Psycho Dad. Uh, once again, finally. Uh, funny how there's never a camera around these days. 
Jessica, you never doxed Blair White? What do you mean doxed Blair White? Let me see if I can find... Is that late breaking news? Should I pull a CNN? Let me pull a CNN and give you some breaking news. Oh, they got me. See what happens when you talk about Yaniv? Mere seconds after bringing it up, I was immediately taken off air. <laughs> Apparently, Blair is claiming that Yaniv gave out their address. Not just the name. I thought we were just saying, like, oh, Yaniv uh, brought up their name. I know when they did their live stream debate that uh, they tried pulling up, like, photos of when they were a teenager and using that as a gotcha against them. Uh, White didn't really seem to give a shit. So I was like, oh, is that, did they post more family photos from when Blair was younger? Or a, a dead name them? Is that the term? Am I thinking of that one? Uh, no, apparently it was, gave out their address. So Yenev not very thrilled with their appearance on that live stream. I, you know, I can't really blame them. They got their ass handed to them. Yenev looked terrible during that. And uh, Blair repeatedly brought up all the weird shit that Yenev gets into. I don't even know if I'm saying the name right. I don't really care. We'll just call him the, the kooky Canadian. All the stuff about wanting to go to a pool party with preteens, asking little girls about their menstrual cycles, wanting to show little girls how to put tampons in, taking photographs in the women's restroom, and just generally being a creepy motherfucker. Also the stuff about the waxing salons, or whatever they're called, where they wanted women to wax their balls, you bigot. Now there's the Human Rights Tribunal. I think they've recessed, and they said it's going to be a couple of months before we hear anything else about it. Uh, there's your update on Canadian happenings, I guess. I'll give you a quick update on the Brits, too. UKIP has elected a new leader. <laughs> Batten wasn't allowed to get in, but they elected a new leader who did get in. Can't remember what his name is. It's something like Dick Brain? Uh, Dick Head? Something. I'm not 100% certain, but they've got some woke hot takes. So I think Sargon is looking okay right now. now. Mike Hokum, a few of the others that wanted to reform the party, lost that vote. Now Dickhead is in charge and is probably going to, I don't know, quadruple down. Probably have a press conference talking about all the people they want to rape. Who knows? That's coming up soon. <laughs> oh, you Kip, why are you even trying? You lost to the, I don't even, the drunk loony party? What was it again? Some very absurdist named fucking group. And you actually lost to them. Just quit. Stop. It's embarrassing at this point. From Sarah H. David says, doing a show Friday on Epstein. You two should do a show together. He's on Twitter now at at S-T-A-Y-T-E of Mind TV. From Dovin Death. Seen a few threads on V about this. Is this an out of season April Fool's joke guy got banned from BlizzCon? And had his Battle.net account banned. I have not found anything to confirm it or confirm this of you. Uh, nope. I'm unaware. <laughs> Blizzard's a horrible company. Like they, they will ban you for doing things outside of actual games. Um, if you troll people in a Blizzard game and you upload footage of that online, they will find out what your account is and they will ban you for those videos. Even if nobody reported you. Even if nobody complained, they hold true to the statement that they can ban you because of it. So, you know, last time I streamed on DLive, I had a multiple connection issues. Once again, we're getting multiple connection issues. I'm not 100% certain what's going on. Uh, but clearly something is not working properly today. Uh, maybe I'll have to go back to YouTube for a while. I don't know until I can figure out what exactly the technical issue is on DLive with being able to run a stream that doesn't get uh, cut off repeatedly in the morning. I'm not 100% certain what's going on. I've got my settings put at the lowest possible setting I can. Not I don't have a high bit rate. I've set it up appropriately. I have a good internet connection, so I'm not 100% certain what's going on. But they don't want the truth to get out to you because we're coming back with Epstein. That's what's coming up next. They must have known we're going to talk about it. They want to take us out ahead of time. It's the only explanation I can come up with. Uh, but we'll take a quick five-minute break. Go grab yourself a drink, take a piss, do what you got to do. Uh, when we come back, we'll follow up with the happenings in the Epstein case, talk about Tim Wise, 
and his bizarre statements about wanting to destroy people's lives because their children did something he didn't like, and a few other things. So let me grab some smooth jazz. Oh, some nice jazz music. Oh, don't we love jazz? There's our interlude. I think it'll be good. There we go. We will be back in five minutes. Okay. And we're back from our break. <clears throat> All right. Time to get into the Epstein portion of the show. There's going to be a lot of Epstein portions going forward, I'm sure. As more and more information comes out about the crazy shit surrounding that, I'm trying to bring us up to speed on where we are right now. Epstein, of course, is dead after being brought to a federal correctional facility. Uh, uh, committed suicide. I don't know if you can't see the air quotes, but believe me, I'm making them. Awfully convenient for a billionaire pedophile who was connected to the elite of the world to suddenly mysteriously end up dead. A lot of people questioning what was going on with that. Well, we're going to find out more about that. A couple of people had some uh, quick takes from uh, the UFO answer. Mr. Manchild, I can't reveal the truth, but you're on the right track. There was an incident between Anderson Cooper and Don Lemon in 2015. However, it also involved Lauren McBride and Brent Spiner. <laughs> well, it's good to know. From concerned white voter, say what you want about the Clintons, but the Trump administration couldn't allow Epstein to go to trial in September 2020, too close to the election. Uh, better to handle it now than later. Uh, my stance on Epstein is I don't trust fucking anybody. Anybody could be dirty with this shit. You know, I, I've expressed that opinion now on the past two weeks shows. How do you investigate it? Who do you trust to investigate it? You've got everybody seems to be connected to this guy. But we've got some uh, interesting things. Uh, at least <laughs> some statements Trump made about uh, Bill Clinton that I'm sure has Hillary seething right now. So we'll take a look at those and a couple of the articles, too, surrounding it. And from Tiberian Fiend, here's a short documentary on TWA Flight 800. For anyone who still thinks the government doesn't engage in cover-ups after the Epstein thing. Yeah, maybe we'll take a look at it if we got a little time later on. Uh, but let's jump into some of the news reports that have come out about Epstein and his mysterious death. Totally on the up and up. You know, Giuliani was on Fox News saying there were cameras. But the cameras didn't work. That's from Rudy. Rudy's saying that. Saying how ridiculous it is that the people are saying there aren't any cameras. He's like, no, there are. The whole fucking place is wired with video. Also brought up how uh, bizarre it is that a place like Alcatraz, uh, and he, how did he describe it? Uh, thousands upon thousands of prisoners on its own almost city-sized self-contained island is better managed and run than a single building that houses federal prisoners. We found that a bit uh, ridiculous. Uh, but more details have emerged about Epstein. We'll take a look at some of these. Screams, screams reportedly came from Jeffrey Epstein's cell the morning he died. <laughs> Just come on. Well, let's, uh, screams could be heard coming from Jeffrey Epstein's jail cell the morning he was found dead as correction workers frantically tried to revive him, urging, breathe, Epstein, breathe, according to reports Tuesday. The multimillionaire pedophile's brother, Mark, was called after Epstein hanged himself with a bedsheet early Saturday at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Lower Manhattan and is the one who identified his body. Epstein, a 66-year-old hedge fund manager, was being held on federal sex trafficking charges after his arrest last month. How much you want to bet that the screaming heard in the cell wasn't breathe, Epstein, breathe? It was probably Epstein screaming as he was being murdered and they had to come up with a nice cover story so the other prisoners if they reported hearing screaming or screeching coming from the cell would be uh, discarded as having misheard what the actual words were the multi-millionaire pedophile brother mark you know i haven't heard of mark epstein before how much do you want to bet it's jeffrey epstein in a really bad wig with a fake mustache like one of those super villain mustaches he twirls in between his fingers. So we've got a man hanging himself. Now that's what they're alleging. And uh, lots of screaming coming from the cell. No video footage. Convenient. The video cameras don't work. 
at Mr. Epstein's uh, jail cell. But then more information comes out. The warden was put on leave. Why would the warden be put on leave? Why was he transferred to a different facility? Why were two of the guards, the only two guards working that night, put on administrative leave? Well, it turns out one of the guards isn't really a guard. They used to work in corrections, but not anymore, not in that capacity. And the other guard was a woman. So we've got one guard that's not a guard, and another guard that's female, and they're the two people in charge of Jeffrey Epstein. So what, what happened with that? Well, how convenient. <laughs> they fell asleep. Both of them. Jail guards assigned to watch Epstein were sleeping before his death. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna come up with a bullshit story, if you're gonna come up with some fantastical bullshit, talking about why you weren't, um, you know, aware that this man was killed in his jail cell, maybe try to come up with something more more convenient than a shitty internet meme. Ooh, God, I'm getting awfully sleepy over here, guys. Oh, we should just close our eyes. Everything's fine. Just tired. Let's go watch some Chris Cuomo. <laughs> Some Don Lemon. Get some rest. Get a couple Z's. They're bo- they both went to sleep? Did somebody gas them? What is it? Fucking Riddler and the Joker running around? Is this Arkham Asylum? What do you mean they both went to sleep? There are only two fucking people working. How do they both go to sleep? The two Manhattan jail guards tasked with monitoring Jeffrey Epstein before he died fell asleep on the job and fudged, fudged. New York Post, why would you, what do you, fudged, you mean lied? Fudged the logs to show they checked on him and other inmates when they actually didn't, according to reports. Surveillance video reviewed after Epstein's death showed the guards at the er, Metropolitan Correctional Center never made some of the inspections noted in the log. A president law enforcement statement told uh, the New York Times late Tuesday, the guards were asleep when they failed to check on Epstein for about three hours before his death. The convicted pedophile hadn't checked, or hadn't been checked on for several hours before he apparently hanged himself with a bedsheet. Early Saturday, in a cell at the Lower Manhattan Jail, a source told the Post on Monday. The guards were, oh, sorry. The guards were required to check on him every 30 minutes, but the procedure was not followed. Sources said the falsifying of their logs could amount to a federal cl- or a crime. One of the two Federal Bureau of Prisons workers assigned to guard the perv in the 9 South unit didn't work as a correction officer but was filling in on overtime. It's unclear what the worker's normal role was. Well, you know, we're just going to grab a couple of uh, janitors. (laughs) Grab a couple fucking janitors. Hey, would you like to watch a billionaire pedophile for us? And, uh, you know, before you start your shift... I got you some donuts. Oh, they taste a little weird? Don't worry about it. Oh, you feeling a bit sleepy? Eat some more of the donuts. Both of you, eat the fucking donuts. Don't worry. Oh, the camera's not working? Yeah, that's not a big deal. Technical glitch. Cameras around here never work. Don't worry about it. Everybody's getting sleepy. Oh, you heard some screaming? Nothing. That's nothing. Don't worry about the screaming. You're being silly. Eat the fucking donuts. So, billionaire pedophile connected to the world's elite held in a fucking federal prison institution, taken off suicide watch with no explanation after alleging people were trying to kill him and apparently alleging uh, people alleging that he tried to kill himself, taken off that, had his own uh, roommate removed from his room a day before the suicide, quote-unquote, had news stories come out about the uh, depth of his connections to famous and powerful people the day before this happened, One of the guards doesn't fucking work as a guard anymore. He could be the janitor. I don't fucking know what he does. Both of them mysteriously go to sleep. None of the cameras work. You expect anybody to believe this shit? Did they expect people are that fucking stupid? That he just decided this, I'm going to kill myself. With what? You know, other prisoners at this facility said he couldn't have killed himself with a bed sheet. He couldn't have hung himself with it. That shit's about as thin as paper. It wouldn't support his body weight. This man is a fucking ogre. He's seven goddamn feet tall. If you were a child being molested by Jeffrey Epstein, it'd be terrifying. He's like some kind of fictional mythological creature. He's weight. He's like lurch. And he's going to hang himself from, from the bed using a paper fucking towel? 
while the guards are asleep and the cameras malfunction and his roommate got taken out and he was taken off suicide watch? Rather fucking convenient. And we're supposed to believe that's realistic. That that doesn't have bullshit smeared all over it. That this isn't some attempt to uh, assuage the fears and worries of rich, powerful men. That they're never going to be brought to justice. And that it could happen this easily and this ridiculously and outrageously in front of the American people. And who do we turn to? Who do you think is going to do anything about it? All these fucking people are connected to him. Got the FBI finally getting off their fucking ass and going to raid Epstein's Island. Who, who knows what's going to happen with that? Have they grounded his plane? Have they taken it into a hangar to tear it apart? He's got uh, residences in Manhattan and in Florida and a couple around the world. Have those all been quarantined? Are people going over those or just the island? Have any of the locals on the neighboring islands been talked to? How about the guy that put in his internet connection? The guy that said he worked for him for 10 years and got paid half a million dollars and quit his job because he was uncomfortable with the amount of young girls on the island. Did you talk to him about the infrastructure? About if he set up some kind of secondary server, if there was some kind of underground installation or facility? Was it sending it off somewhere? All the people that did construction on the island, if you talked to them? You know, it seems like it's a really half-assed approach to this. If they were fucking serious about it, Every one of his residents, every property he owned, every helicopter and airplane he owned would be going, uh, they'd have them locked down, going over them with a fine tooth comb. Every person, every fucking local would be being spoken to. Every person he did business with would be being spoken to. And instead, what do we get? We get fucking Home Depot boxes. Now, for those of you unaware, there's a YouTube channel right now that still exists called Rusty Shackelford. A lot of people... Sorry about that. A lot of people have speculated that Rusty Shackelford <laughs> could, be, could be an old-fashioned internet security guy. Likes him the cocaine. But uh, nobody's 100% certain who runs the channel. Nonetheless, Rusty has taken it upon himself to film what's going on at Epstein's Island by flying drones over it. And he happened to catch the FBI raid. Uh, well, a lot of FBI raid footage of what's going on at Jeffrey Epstein's island. So maybe maybe we take a look at that, and you can watch how goofy these fuckers are. Now let me let me pull up one of the videos here. Let me see if I can find the right one. I want to find the one with the Home Depot boxes just to show you how amateur this shit is, because it's it's fucking ridiculous. Here we go. Uh, so I <laughs> I don't know where he's flying it in from. Is he using, is there a boat? Uh, is he flying it from a boat? Is he flying it from the island across the way? Is this via fucking some kind of fancy satellite setup? I have no idea. I don't know the exact extended range on these drone models. I don't even know what the drone model he's using is. But nonetheless, here he is, capturing footage of Jeffrey Epstein's pedophile island. And he happens to catch the FBI, I guess, going through their, their shit. And I love it because if you watch this fucking video, you can see that the FBI and some of the sheriffs and local law enforcement that are all taking part in this notice the drone. They notice the drone, but none of them know what to do. Somebody said, "Why didn't they go out and just shoot it?" I, <laughs> who knows? But just watch, watch the guy nearest in the window, because you'll eventually start to see him. Like he keeps creeping out and looking up, like he knows. He, yeah, there he is. He's turning around. He suspects. Oh, i got to bend down a little to take a look. FBI in their uh, methodology. Oh, there's some smart boys there. So they finally got around to go to the goddamn island. And they're starting to pack stuff up. Starting to pack up the computers. Starting to pack up the personal possessions. Grabbing those diaries, those journals. In hopes they find something that's going to be damning or incriminating. Because the SDNY and other uh, organizations are proceeding forward with the conspiracy charges. <laughs> Here's Rusty Shackelford. Just, that's a big fuck you. Oh, there he is. He's looking right at him. What? What the fuck is that? CIA, what are you doing here? This is an FBI operation. <laughs> and they don't know what to do. But I love it. It's just a big fuck you. He flies that drone. He doesn't even give a shit. They just fly that right up their ass. Fuck him. 
In fact, there's a moment in the video where it almost looks like he's going to fly into the house. God, I wish he would have done that. Somebody left the door open, and this guy's like, hey, I'm going to fly it right in the fucking house. But I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit. I want to show you what they did. <laughs> what their genius solution to this was. This is a fucking... This is a massive amount of law enforcement. NYPD, SD, NY, FBI. There's your solution. Fucking Home Depot boxes. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Look at this. He grabbed a giant roll of tape. You got two boxes. What are you going to do with it? You, oh, you're going to tape it there? Okay. What about the other 80 feet of window that's exposed? <laughs> you just going to tape it up. And somebody grab a tarp. Grab that tarp. Can't let that drone footage out. You got to stop it. Oh, the tarp's not big enough to cover the window. What are we going? What are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to stop the drone pilot. Give me more Home Depot boxes. Look at it, it's like a comedy. It's a fucking comedy. We'll grab, we'll grab another tarp. We need more tarps. The fucking FBI. What are you goofy fucks doing? Are you kidding me? He's just flying this shit over their fucking heads. Leave it. Look at this. Left the goddamn doors open. You know there's a drone filming shit. You left the door open. What if he? What if he flew it in there? What if he flew it in there and just blew it up in your face? Try to try to be a little professional about this. <laughs> you goddamn FBI. Oh, were these interns? Were these FBI officers like that correction officer? They're not really FBI officers. They're janitors. Just just deciding to have a bit of fun. It's a weekend gig. I don't really. I don't really consider it that big a deal. One of the more interesting bits of video, I mean, he, he got a lot of stuff, but the thing that caught my eye was this video. Uh, this is a section of Jeffrey Epstein's island. Uh, but what you'll notice is there's a fuck ton of construction equipment. Now you've got ro uh, road pavers, stuff like that, but you've got digging equipment. Now I know that he put in you know, uh, underground channels to run his electrical and to run uh, his internet and other stuff, his fiber optic. Uh, but what I'm curious about, you know, here you have this guy, this super rich paranoid pedophile who has potentially blackmail material on everybody. All his associates keep repeatedly saying, and this was even covered in news articles back uh, during the original uh, charging of him back in 05 and 06, saying that he had a, a pension for wiring for video and sound. That he liked to cover everything. He liked to blackmail people. Everybody was convinced this guy has wired everything. If you're around Jeffrey Epstein, you have no privacy. He's filming you. So it, it occurs to me that if you've got this kind of paranoid pedophile with this amount of construction equipment, he's probably going to have redundancies in place. People are like, oh, well, he, he destroyed his computer. He got rid of his laptop. I bet you this motherfucker somewhere on this island has a vault or some kind of a underground storage area that he used this construction equipment to build. And I bet you in that fucking area, there's a little server bank. There, It's nice and set up. All the shit's there. I bet you he's got a fucking database with all these people's shit in that area. It's probably buried on this fucking island. That's my theory. That's what I'm sticking to. I don't know where, but it's somewhere out there. Grab a, grab a metal detector and start looking. I bet you the fucking staff don't know either. Oh, I bet they're confused. I don't know. But you wouldn't need this amount of construction equipment for an island that's already been built. He's had this island for over a decade. It's it's already constructed. It's done. All the the bungalows and the uh, you know services they're they're all set up. It's all done. But he's still got all that shit there. I, I bet you somewhere it's that shit is buried somewhere. Somewhere on this, it's a treasure hunt, chat. Somewhere on this, somewhere on, pe it's like the new episode, uh, the new season of Survivor. Somewhere on Pedophile Island. Jeffrey Epstein's cache of child blackmail pornography exists with the world's elite banging toddlers. Happy hunting. Welcome to Survivor Epstein Island. 
where where on this little island is it? Where do we go to find that that fucking hidden cache of blackmail material? Maybe he put it under the sundial. Maybe he's that ballsy. X marks a spot chat. Would Epstein be that ballsy? Right? Look, that's his sundial. X marks a spot. I bet you that's where it is. I bet you a motherfucker like this guy, that's where he'd put it. Uh, build me a giant sundial. And underneath it, put a vault with all my blackmail material. Nobody will ever think to look under the giant X on the tropical island. Got him. Nailed it. Solve this mystery. Call me Columbo, motherfucker. I solved the mystery. Oh, compass, sundial, whatever. I, I don't know fucking what it is. It's a giant fucking X. X marks the spot. Somebody get me a jackhammer and a boat. We're going to Pedophile Island. <laughs> We're going to Pedophile Island to find the hidden cache of blackmail material. We need to do this. I know, I know you motherfuckers. Are, listen, that he will not divide us shit. All right, people track down a flag on a pole. And the only information they had was the position of stars in the sky and the sound of airplanes overhead. And they f they found this fucking flag in the middle of nowhere using stars and airplane noises. I'm fairly certain a motherfucker can get a boat and a jackhammer and just check under that giant fucking X. <laughs> I'm fairly certain you can pull it off. Holy shit. This Epstein stuff. Now, I know they're they're saying, "Oh, well, we're going to continue. We're we're going to we're going to press forward. We're not stopping here. We're not going to let the pedophile get away with it." I I don't know. I think the civil suits will bring something forward. I I have hope the SDNY is actually serious about pursuing corruption. Uh, but people brought up uh you know, I I'll I'll find it. Cuz <laughs> Trump uh Trump decided to take a shit on I love it. You know, the only thing that I, I do find entertaining, at least in this regard, is the fact that as <laughs> Trump is saying shit, I think, just to piss off the Clintons at this point. I, I don't even think he really cares about anything else. Just making Bill and Hillary mad is probably good enough for him. Uh, so he was asked by a reporter about his statements about um, Bill Clinton. Because he had said, hey, you know, you need to check out... Uh, you need to check out how many times Clinton went to that island. I haven't been to that island, but I hear Bill has. He was on that uh, pedophile plane 27 times. So a reporter corners him and asks him to elaborate. What do you mean? What do you mean? What are you talking about, Bill Clinton? And this was what the uh, president had to say about the ex-president when it comes to Jeffrey Epstein and his uh, pedophile shenanigans. Oh, my God, that audio is horrible. I'm just going to read the quote. Alan Rupert, God, get some better sound equipment. Shit. A reporter, do you really think the Clintons are involved in Epstein's death? This is Trump's response. I have no idea. I know he was on the plane 27 times. The question you have to ask is, did Bill Clinton go to the island? I was never there. If you find that out, you're going to know a lot. Oh. Is a president, does he have enough Secret Service security detail to prevent barbells from falling on him? Because <laughs> that's, that's a right hook right in the face of Hillary. Hey, uh, Hillary, uh, can you ask your uh, husband if he ever went to Pedophile Island and uh, fuck toddlers? <laughs> we need to investigate this. He's on that plane 27 times, denied it, but he was. Question you got to ask is, did he go to the Pedophile Island? I was never there. But if you find out, you're going to know a lot. Again, this uh, one of the important things that ties into this is the recollection of one of the witnesses saying that Bill Clinton didn't just fly on the plane, that he was ferried back and forth between the plane and potentially, I believe they were saying the island, via helicopter. So he didn't go in via boat. He didn't uh, go through the local area that he could have been witnessed. But a private helicopter took him in. So I, I, I don't know. But I'm sure the Clintons are fucking seething right now that it keeps getting brought up. That it keeps getting... And Bill Clinton's denial of only being on that plane four times was called out by numerous reporters. And these are reporters that 
I have a, a political bias that goes towards the liberal side. But they're the ones that covered it. They're like, what are you talking about? We have flight logs that show that you're full of shit. You were on there 26, 27 times. What do you mean only four fucking times? This is going to be another, It's what is the definition of is, is thing. I did not have sex with that woman. I did not go to Pedophile Island and fuck toddlers. That's going to be, that's going to be the future. I, I don't know. You know, the only thing I think that could be more humorous in a situation like this is if, what if Jeffrey Epstein really did just kill himself? <laughs> what if? What if they're all so mad about this? Because it's the one time it wasn't a conspiracy. What if Epstein just really did decide to kill himself? But there's so many bizarre coincidences around it, it makes it look like a conspiracy? And the people that usually do the conspiracies are offended by that? <laughs> they're like, he's making us look bad! We just pulled off 9-11! And this fucking pedophile's making everybody think we killed him! Can't let that happen, we need to investigate! That's the that's the only that's the only outcome I can see with a bit of humor in it. But I personally believe he was killed. Now he was either killed outright, probably by another prisoner, or maybe even a bought off guard, or they drove him to suicide to keep him silent. I think that uh, the connections to people like Prince Andrew, former presidents, prime ministers, uh, financial gurus, heads of companies and corporations. It's, it's a lot of information. And it's some damning information. Now you can fuck with the world economy. You bring enough of these people down. I mean, how many billionaires can you... How many billionaires go to prison for something like this? Would, would that start to have an effect on the economy? How many companies would just lose uh, immense amounts of stock value if you found out the heads of them, the CEOs of them, were involved with some child-fucking cult on some Caribbean island? You know, Les Wexner, is it? Uh, the stocks and companies he owns, like Victoria's Secret and others, uh, from what I've read, are taking hits, losing value ever since the Epstein information came out. Ever since people found out that uh, he had had $50 million stolen from him, that he had a connection to him. So, I mean, that that's just surface-level stuff. What if, what if information comes out for some, you know, large corporate entity where you get more information, where it's, where it's something really dark? Where they're fucking preteens. You know, Epstein had given an interview to his biographer where he'd mentioned people from Silicon Valley. Uh, you know, he'd had meetings with people like Zuckerberg and Elon Musk and others. And he told the biographer, these people are degenerates. Uh, he had said that they were into hardcore drug use and kinky sex. How many of those people are sweating bullets right now? How many, how many Jack Dorseys and Zuckerbergs are like, holy shit, I don't want to touch this. I don't want this coming back on me. Not even saying they're involved in the heinous shit that Epstein did. But remember, he had that island wired for fucking video. For all we know, he's got video of Mark Zuckerberg snorting cocaine in his ass. <laughs> we could have some really wild shit come out that could really fuck with some stock value. So who knows where it's going to go? Who knows what's going to happen? It's a fucking clown world. We live in clown world. Where was this, uh, this asshole, this crazy, this guy's unhinged, Tim Wise, you know, let me, let me pull this up, I'll show you what he was going on about, I, I don't even, I don't understand this guy, to be honest with you, he's fucking bizarre, I know, I've, I've seen him mentioned before, but I never really paid attention to him, he's what you'd call one of these, uh, anti-racist activists, but apparently some kids put up a video he didn't like, and he wants their parents destroyed because of it. So I'll just, I'll pull up the tweets. You tell me if it sounds insane to you. Because <laughs> it sounds, it sounds just bonkers. Oh, he, he, God, he talks so much. There's so many, makes me look like I'm silent on social media. Jesus. Oh, did he, he I did he delete his tweets? Did he get embarrassed enough to pull them down? No. I think he might have, actually. Well, that's fine. They're archived. It's not like they're going to disappear. But I can't imagine somebody like this is just going to pull them down. All right, well, whatever. I will uh, I'll just pull up a record of it. The screen cap is good enough. Apparently, two teenage girls did a video 
where they talked about uh, the good old slavery days. <laughs> and uh, it talked about how they didn't like black people. Tim Wise obviously didn't like that. Very upset by it. It's very triggering to Tim. Let's pull this up here. So it's wrong. Oh, boy, what's going on here? Oh, God, technical issues. Jim, stop it. I believe this should be the right one. There we go. Uh, so Tim Wise didn't like that. Upset him. Uh, so this is what he had to say. I want their parents wrecked. I want them shamed and financially punished to the point where they have to beg the rest of us for alms. And I'll gladly provide them for an apology for their awful racist shittery. He also said he wanted them named and shamed. So two teenage girls who are 17, 16 years old post an Instagram video Tim Wise doesn't like, and he wants to destroy their parents. I want them shamed and financially punished to the point they have to beg us to survive. Sounds a bit insane to me, Tim. Sounds like you might be going a little crazy, a little overboard on uh, your assessment of the situation. You want to destroy their lives there's, because their kid said some stupid shit on the internet. He made a lot of declarative statements too when he went on this Twitter rant talking about how these parents obviously must be racist. They have to be. They're responsible. The parents must be racist and they must have taught these innocent baby girls this. And that's the only reason those 17-year-old girls don't like black dudes. So, of course, the only solution. We have to destroy their lives. We have to brand them with a scarlet letter. We have to make them destitute and destroy. This is a Sam Hyde quote. Tim Wise, this is verbatim what Sam Hyde said. They want to see you destroyed, your children raped, and your lives ruined. He literally wants to destroy people because he didn't like what somebody's kid said on the internet. To financially punish them for it. To brand them for it. And he's one of the people that self-identifies as a good guy. He's, one of, he's the one who says he's on the right side of history. Uh, we got to start bringing out familial punishments. If we can't, if we can't get you for something, we're going to go after your family. That's a good, that's a good uh, bit of logic there, Tim. That's never been done before. Always works out well, too, I'm sure. What could be the downside of going after somebody's family? Because you don't like what they did. This guy's a fucking lunatic. An absolute fucking lunatic. I tell you, man. Some of the people out there, nutty motherfuckers. Tim Wise, most definitely one of them. Uh, from Lupum, the economy would tank with the Epstein thing. Uh, economy supported by Friends of Epstein, Jesus fucking Christ. From Bimbo Dickens, look up Pentagon child pornography ring. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want that as a search term in my Google. From Lupum, it's a comedy, the whole damn thing, it's a joke. Uh, yeah, it very much is. Hall of Gemini. I smell pasties. That donut joke made a uh, whole truth. Uh, Jay Fox, nothing attached. Ghoul infested retard. Uh, and then Special Forces trolling CNN video. Check Streamlabs here. And getting close to closing out. Oh, I have one come through. Let me read this real quick. From HTRTU, if there was a vault, it's probably destroyed. Remember how there was a fire on the island in January? I'm going to have to go with no. Listen, if you're some, again, just hypothetically speaking, if you're a paranoid billionaire pedophile and you've got blackmail material on world leaders and the heads of finance, you're probably going to invest a few extra bucks to make sure your vault is fucking fireproof. You're probably, you probably got that shit on lockdown. Because at this point, you would figure everybody knows that Epstein has blackmail material on them. So the only thing keeping his ass alive is that blackmail material he would probably fortify the shit out of those redundancies to make sure that they didn't get destroyed in a uh, happenstance fire. That That's my guess on it. I could be wrong. I just think he's the type that would have backups somewhere. 
I, I can't imagine that he that he would allow himself to be in a situation where he didn't. But make of it what you will. All right, Chad. Well, I, I know we've been covering Epstein a lot. I think it's going to be a big, I think it is a big thing. The people involved are powerful. They, I mean, this is, it's weird to me. This entire situation is weird. It just feels like the sort of thing that's going to go on for a while. Uh, regardless of the outcome, people are never going to believe the official story. It's always going to have, you know, quote unquote, a conspiracy around it. Why wouldn't it? It's ridiculous. Guards falling asleep, cameras malfunctioning, man has connections to the most powerful people in the world, potential blackmail on the most powerful people in the world, potentially running a pedophile ring. I mean, Jesus Christ, that's a it's a Hollywood script. It's not going to go away. People are always going to question it, regardless of what the outcome is. But this is the sort of shit that, if this were the 90s and this happened, and this was blowing up like it's blowing up right now, and it was things were happening, you'd have coverage like you did with the OJ shit. I mean, it's 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 it should be a bigger deal than it is. But of course, our press corps is more interested. And I'm talking about like the mainstream television preventer, or presenters, more interested, really, in uh, what? And talking about uh, <laughs> calling them Fredo is racist and asking you to smell their balls. And that's the point we're at. You have the hottest story you could ever ask for. International, top of the lead, you know, uh, international elite pedophile ring by the most powerful men in the world. That's the fucking story that's been laid in your fucking lap as a reporter. And what are you doing, CNN? You're threatening to throw people down the stairs and asking them to smell your testicles. <laughs> what? Welcome to... That's clown world shit. That's pure clown world shit. If these people had handled a fucking Watergate, nothing would have happened. Are you kidding me? They're given the biggest story they could ever ask for. Maybe give it some more fucking coverage. Start tracking down some goddamn leads. Fly out a few fucking reporters to the islands around there. Start talking to some goddamn locals. Get some of the fucking people that work to build the goddamn island. Start talking to them. Hey, guess about a, you know all those employees that worked at the pedophile island? They don't have a fucking job anymore. The pedophile's dead. So I guess it's a good time to start offering them money to give you their uh, inside scoop on what happened on the island. Amazing to me that they're not going out there and doing that. Biggest goddamn story they could ask for, not doing a fucking thing with it. Ridiculous. Absolutely clownishly ridiculous. Uh, from the Otaku King, I wonder if there's a dead man switch on the info. I, I don't know how it'd be operated. I mean, it'd be something you'd have to check in with, but uh, he was incarcerated before for a while. Uh, maybe that's why he was desperate to get out on bail. Maybe he has a dead man switch that's set to go off after 60 days of no check-in. <laughs> that's why he wanted to get out, because all the blackmail material is going to go public? Potentially. Maybe. But he could just have a lawyer or somebody else go and uh, do whatever he needs to do to have the switch reactivated. So I, I don't know. But if I had to lay uh, my theories on it right now as it is, uh, it's no coincidence he died. He's paranoid and rich enough to have redundancies in place. Uh, the FBI and the other law enforcement absolutely locked down every residence and uh, aircraft that he has and tear it apart and you'll find stuff. I guarantee it. And reporters, fucking Christ, go talk to the employees, go to the fucking islands and talk to the locals, talk to the people that built the place. I guarantee you they're, they're, they're going to want to talk. They have no reason not to. It seemed like the worst kept secret in the area. Everybody knew the guy had Pedophile Island. I'm sure they'd love to tell you stories about it. You, you, this is a dream story for a reporter. You can't ask for something better. It's a Hollywood script. Why are you not jumping on that? I don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I guess we just going to have to small Don, or smell Don Lemon's balls and have Goddity Goopy threaten to throw us down the fucking stairs. Absolutely fucking ludicrous. Ah, well, you know, I, I would tell you what I had planned for for the next stream on this upcoming Friday, but I'm not even going to bother. It seems like every time I try to set the agenda, some crazy shit happens, uh, whether it's a pedophile billionaire hanging himself or some other ridiculous shit. So I, I'm just going to play it by ear. We'll see what happens. 
Uh, if I have technical issues again on Friday, I might start, maybe I'll stream on like Brightside Bob or something. Um, I, I don't know. I'm hoping it's just like a hiccup. Uh, I've been on DLive now for about a month and a half, two months, uh, and it's been fairly solid. I uh, just these last, you know, the last stream and this stream, for whatever reason, stuff's going on. But uh, maybe the Lemon Emperor is sending me a warning, telling me I need to, uh, I need to stay back, or he's gonna fire at me. Now, oh, what do we wanna? What song are we gonna end on? <sighs> what song? Oh, I know what we're gonna end on. Of course. Why wouldn't we end on this song? In celebration. In celebration of Don Lemon and the best gay pickup technique that's ever existed of asking people to smell your nuts. We'll end on this song. I hope you have a good rest of the week, chat. I will see you all on Friday, where inevitably we'll talk about the next ridiculous shit in the Epstein debacle. Can't wait to find out that, uh, I don't know, the correctional officers were Mossad agents. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I don't, I, where is it going to go? Who knows? Who knows where this telenovela is going to take us, but it's taking us somewhere. Enjoy the rest of your week, Chad.